Hi guys, I'm glad you could join us again. In this series so far, we've learned a lot of organic chemistry. Remember that organic chemistry is the chemistry of life, and it makes us who we are. We've named organic molecules containing double bonds, triple bonds, branches, and even halogens. We are almost ready to call ourselves budding organic chemists. Today, we are turning our attention to oxygen in organic molecules. These organic molecules will therefore contain carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. There are three large groups of molecules that contain oxygen. Alcohols, carboxylic acids, and esters. These are all homologous series. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to distinguish between alcohol, carboxylic acids, and esters. Identify, name, and draw alcohol molecules. Identify, name, and draw carboxylic acid molecules. Identify, name, and draw ester molecules. And describe some of the modern uses of these molecules. In this lesson, you will probably hear about a lot of organic chemicals that are new to you. But there is one which is well known, alcohol. Drinking alcohol irresponsibly or excessively is not good for anyone. It impairs judgment and often leads to fatal car crashes. Alcohol is a toxin to the system and can have a negative effect on the way our brains function. Most people don't know that the molecule that is in wine, beer, and spirits is actually only one out of a big family of molecules, all called alcohols. Molecules from the alcohol group are also used to make some dental products, cosmetics, antiperspirants, perfumes, antiseptic and cleansing liquids, medication, and some foodstuffs. Of course, alcohols are also used in many types of laboratory work. Alcohols are also specific homologous series. And like homologous molecules, they all share the same functional group, the hydroxyl or OH group. They also share a common way of naming. Let's name a few now and see if you can spot the pattern. Both of these molecules are alcohols, propanol and pentanol. Notice the OH functional group on each one. Can you spot the pattern in the naming? If you noticed that they all end with the letters OL, you'd be correct. Alcohols are named by changing the end of the backbone molecule from the letter E to the letters OL. In this case, the backbone molecule is propane. Propane consists of only carbon and hydrogen. But when one hydrogen atom changes to hydroxyl, like this, we have an alcohol. So the name changes from propane to propanol. Remember the rules for naming alkenes and alkynes. The same rules apply for alcohols to show where the OH group is. In the case of propanol, the OH group is on the first carbon, so we don't need to add a number to the name. Let's see that again, paying attention to the naming steps. This molecule is the alcohol in wine and beer. Naming becomes easy if we count the carbon atoms first. The backbone of this molecule is called ethane because it consists of two carbon atoms. I'm sure you can work out how the name changes to indicate that it is now an alcohol. Quite simply, the name of this alcohol is ethanol. Notice how the E at the end of the original name is swapped for the letters O-L. There is no need to place a number in the name because the hydroxyl group is on the first carbon. Now, 
try to draw the molecule in this motor car antifreeze. The main ingredient is called ethylene glycol, but its IU pack name is Ethan 1 2 diol. Remember that di means two of the same thing. The numbers indicate their position. If this is the structure you got, you are correct. Well done. Notice that the backbone molecule is ethane, and two hydroxyl groups occur on carbons number one and two. The ethan one two diol is very useful as an antifreeze. When mixed with water, it protects the engine of a car in cold weather by keeping the water inside the engine in liquid form. It does this by lowering the freezing point of the water inside. So when it's below freezing point in winter, the water in the engine can still flow. Alcohols are also useful as disinfectants because they kill germs very effectively. They are used to sterilize wounds, cuts, and even surgical instruments. We are starting to use alcohols in another interesting way. There is a lot of uncertainty about where our fuels will come from in the future. So alcohols are being investigated and used as fuels for motor vehicles. Some fuels in South Africa already contain ethanol. And in case you'd like a good career in the sciences, there is much work being done on producing ethanol from maize, waste fruit, and other plant matter. Think about it. Now, I'd like to introduce you to carboxylic acids. This group of molecules also contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. They all have a double bonded oxygen in combination with the hydroxyl group we saw in the alcohols. This functional group is called the carboxyl group. Can you see a pattern in the names of these two molecules? When there is a carboxyl group on an organic molecule, the end of the name changes from the usual E at the end of the backbone molecule to oic acid. So this molecule based on ethane and now with a carboxyl group added is called ethanoic acid. By the way, this is the same acid that is made when wine is left open so that air can enter the container. Yeast and bacteria use the ethanol in the wine and oxygen from the air to make the sour tasting ethanoic acid. This is the same process used to make vinegar. So the next time you add vinegar to your chips, think of the organic chemicals you're eating. Give this a try. Draw and name a carboxylic acid containing five carbon atoms. Well, you know that a five carbon molecule is pentane. So I'm sure you drew this molecule based on pentane. This is pentanoic acid. Remember when drawing the molecule, first draw the backbone or longest carbon chain based on the name of the backbone. Then change to fit in the functional group, the carboxyl. So here, pentane has become pentanoic acid. Hold on to that drawing of pentanoic acid. We are going to see if we can do anything interesting with the chemical. Let's go to the lab and see what Philip is doing. Hi, Philip. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my lab. We're going to do some organic chemistry together using carboxylic acids. We're going to use ethanol and pentanoic acid to make something new. This is called a reflux apparatus. We heat the mixture in the bottom of the round bottom flask until it boils. The gases rise into the condenser where they become liquid again by condensation and fall back into the mixture. Refluxing allows us to keep the reaction hot and boiling without losing any of the liquids inside. So let's get going. First, 
We place some alcohol inside the flask. And some pentanoic acid. And finally, we add a few drops of sulfuric acid, being careful not to touch anything. This acts as a good catalyst for this reaction. Now, we heat up the mixture and let it boil and reflux for 10 minutes. Now, we must distill the mixture to separate the parts of the mixture. The ethanol boils off easily at 78 degrees. The mixture will boil over here, past the thermometer, and into the condenser, where it will turn into a liquid and collect here. We'll continue to heat the mixture. Can you see the alcohol boiling off on this side? As we start to collect, the part which boils at around about 140 to 145 degrees, we start to see and smell a different product. Mmm, I wish I had smell-o-vision. This stuff smells great. It has a very sweet smell and reminds me a little of apples. This sweet-smelling product from this reaction is called an ester. So let's get this straight. When a carboxylic acid like this reacts with an alcohol like this, we get an ester as a product. That's pretty cool, but I think Amira will explain more about these great smelling compounds. Now to name these esters. We have to know which alcohol and which carboxylic acid the ester was made from. It is quite easy if we look at the chemical reaction we saw in the lab. Here, the alcohol ethanol reacts with pentanoic acid. The pentanoic acid loses its hydroxyl group to make water. The product is an ester. In this case, the ester is a pentanoate. When carboxylic acids make esters, their names change. The end of the acid changes into O8. We always name the part from the alcohol first, in the same way we do for a branch. Here, the part from the ethanol is an ethyl group, so it forms the first part of ethyl pentanoate. There is a difference, though. The words are separated by a space. Can you think why? The words in ethyl propanoate are spaced because there is an oxygen atom separating the two carbon chains. Now try to name the acid and alcohol used to make this ester, and then try to name the ester itself. You can identify the acid by looking for the double bond to oxygen. So we can see that ethanoic acid was used to make this compound. 
Now we name the chain attached to the ethan-08 by finding the alcohol it came from. The alcohol was three carbon atoms long, so it must have been propanol. Now it will be easy to put together the pieces of the puzzle. We used ethanoic acid, which becomes ethan-08. The three carbon atom chain is a propyl chain and makes this propyl ethan-08. The esters made in this way are very useful to the food and cosmetics industry because they smell a lot like natural fruits and foods. Because of their sweet or pleasant smells, it is possible to flavor food so that it tastes similar to the natural items we find in natural foodstuff. In the cosmetics industry, esters are used as environmentally friendly solvents in nail polish and to add fragrance to perfumes. Next time you splash on some perfume or aftershave, try to picture the structure of these interesting organic molecules. I'm sure you found this a fascinating lesson. Remember alcohols the next time you see someone drinking wine, beer, or spirits, and the next time you taste the sour taste of vinegar or smell ripe bananas or apples, I'm sure you will think of organic chemicals. Here is today's task. Use structural formula to show how propanoic acid and pentanol combine to make pentyl propanoate. For more information on organic molecules and related topics, please visit our website on www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn.